Um, I actually got something I want to share too, because uh, I got a buddy of mine, and uh, this is a sidestep here. But if y'all enjoyed D and D, something to fill your time, I got a buddy of mine, Nathan Napalm. He put in like a ton of hours creating this D and D play your own, like choose your own adventure sort of campaign. And I'm sharing it in chat now. And that's his tweet or whatever. And it's a good way. I, I think we as a community jumped in and played that together. Uh, and I want to share it with as many people as possible. He put a lot into it, a lot of his time, a lot of his energy. And it's just, it was a really, it was really well done. He uses puppets. We spent like two hours, right? Playing through, got squashed one time through, made some bad choices. Played it a second time through, made it all the way to the end. It was like two hours. And there's more replayability to it. And that's, if you enjoy D&D, you know, tabletop, stuff like that, this is definitely something to check out. You know, it's it's not like child-friendly necessarily, but it's definitely not like MA either. It's like, you know, parent discretion on stuff. There's like fake blood and stuff like that. But it's a really good time. And it's it's really well done. Um, definitely nothing like it on, on YouTube. So I wanted to share it. He did a lot of really good things with it. Um, and it's pretty immersive and it was, it was really fun. We enjoyed it. And I just want to share it with as many people as possible. Cause there's definitely people out there. that are going to enjoy it too. And, uh, he's a homie and he's a good dude and puts a lot into, into this and, and what he does and what he gives to the community. And I wanted to share that here with the ashes fam as well. Cause there's a ton of people. I mean, what's this game start from a freaking tabletop pathfinder or sorry, pathfinder, pathfinder words are hard pathfinder campaign that. You know, it's like two for two. Uh, yeah, so go check it out if you enjoy it. It, it might vibe. It might vibe for a lot of you, and and I would definitely like to know what people think. A lot of people here are enjoying it. We've enjoyed it, um, so check it out. The winds of change had come for the Pathfinder and his companions. The future was uncertain, and the same was more than true for the future they would carve on Vera. It was once again time to make their way forward. Their eyes were set on a towering landmark on the distant horizon, and it was time to adventure again. Welcome to Ashes Pathfinders, your dedicated and trusted Ashes of Creation podcast. Join us as we share in the journey that reignites the embers and rekindles the flames in the hearts of those long left to cinder. I'm your host, Phoenix, also known as Samorg, and I'm joined today by my returning Pathfinders. Let's welcome back Daedalus. Hello, everyone. Also, welcome back Half Tilt. Hey, hey how's, you, how's everyone doing tonight? Oh, we are good, man. We're here again to stay the course, buddy. And uh, the winds of change, my friends, they're always blowing. Uh, Want to give a big shout out, as sure. always, to all of the Imperial Flames, which are the supporters here on Twitch. YouTube, Patreon, thank you so much for keeping this community's flames bolstering greater week after week. And also, as always, a shout out to the home of this podcast, AshesHQ.com, the community curated website for all things Ashes of Creation. My friends, we have a light show today because we, we don't have a lot to talk about in the realm of Ashes of Creation, but typical pathfinder forum we've we've always got stuff that definitely we could talk about when it comes to ashes of creation doesn't matter how much news we got doesn't matter how many announcements we got there's always something interesting to discuss and sometimes we curate that ourselves here on the show um, before we get uh, started with the actual show and catching up with our cast um, remember you can go to our uh, twitter which is at ashes pathfinder the pinned post right there at the top We'll have links to all of our podcast places, including iTunes, which we would greatly appreciate some reviews on. Give us a five-star review, leave a comment. And if you do leave a comment, we will read that here on the show. You can also call into 1-539-664-6801. And if you want to hassle our Pathfinder grunt, who's out there drudging around in Vera, all you got to do is shoot a message to ashespathfinders at gmail.com, my friends. Nothing to read, nothing in the mailbag, no messages to play. But why don't we catch up with our cast here and with everyone here joining us live on Twitch. Um, let's catch up, friends. What's been in store for your past weeks? What's been new for you all? Daedalus, half tilt. 
Um, I just honestly, I've been having a ton of fun in uh, in Valheim. Um, I've been actually tried the open beta for New World as well, so I'm excited to uh, you know play that as also. Um, and also, I do have one announcement. Yeah. Um, against uh, well, my my better judgment when it comes to uh, accepting the ultimate defense bubble hearth. I have decided to uh, make a change in terms of my guild affiliation. I actually put in my papers this week to become part of the virtue community. Um, and I don't know that Sim knows this. He might have heard it through the grapevine. Oh, of but course. I, actually have, <laughs> I know everything I have, most of the time. You know everything. So well, I just <laughs> wanted to announce that I am officially, um, you know, put my papers in to join the virtue community. I'm really excited about it. It's, you know, been a great ride so far on this podcast and interacting with this community. And I felt that it was the right home for me. So oh, I nice. just wanted to say thank you to this community. And I'm yeah. looking forward to great things in the future. To be fair, right? I, I did find out my aspirants are pretty, pretty, they're rock stars, man. That's all I gotta say is they're, they're good. They're rock stars, man. They're, they're basically the future officers. Everything in virtue is about merit. They've been, they've been uh, earning their merit. For, for these potential roles in the future that are, I think coming up is the GM of virtue. It's about, we're getting close to about time for me on some, some of the homies. So, um, you know, uh, to be fair, Daedalus, I've, I've felt like you've, you've been meant to be in virtue for a long time. So I, I was really, it was very welcome news to see that. And I was like, I was like, Oh shit. Cause you were like, I have something in there. And we have our podcast chat for anybody who's been on the show. We've got a DM group and it helps to kind of like add our new members for the cast keep people in the loop of what's going on like we kind of like present topics and stuff we kind of sometimes we brainstorm conversation components like ooh, this came up this week or i found this article or someone in the community talked about this or whatever it's like that could be interesting to talk about. so we like collaboratively kind of sometimes you know um put our minds together and so we also kind of give each other a heads up like you know today i was running a little late and he was like daedalus was like i have a, a news for the announcement and then you know for the podcast i was like all right that's cool didn't know anything at the time looked at like my my group chat and discord with my you know aspirants and virtue and saw some notes there and i was like oh snap i was like i'm not gonna say anything i'm not gonna let him know i know i'm just gonna kind of see how this plays out when we go live that'll be fun but yeah dude most welcome dude you've been you've been around you know and i think most people in in the virtue community have considered you kind of a a homie or at least like you know a pretty solid friend of virtue. We've, we've ran together in a lot of different situations. I know you're going to be playing in new world with our chapter. We have a chapter that's going to be playing in there. Um, we got the chapter in ashes that's waiting for the game as well. So, you know, got a lot of great people in virtue and we, uh, you know, continue to, uh, find more that fit the mold and buddy, you, you fit it for a long time and it was very clear. So very welcome to have you kind of like, you know, digging in and submitting your paperwork, so to speak, or whatever we want to call that. So, um honored honored to be a part of the community i just hope i same. do you all right so same i mean just as long as you bring the life forge bay powder i really don't think you can go wrong so <laughs> true true that <laughs> oh man dude the best part is I actually have a character in the elder scrolls online whose name is get dusted who i play somewhat regularly so <laughs> just gonna put that out there and when i kill people in pvp i sometimes walk in the on. light friends <laughs> It's red, you know, behind me. Look, his eyes glow with the beautiful radiant aura of the light, you know. Um, I wish mine did, you know, IRL, but yo, um, I do actually have an announcement, a couple quick announcements. So if you're looking for a game to play, you know, and you you really you don't have anything to play, if you do have an Elder Scrolls account, you already have it, whatever, you're welcome to join some of us. It's not a it's not the Virtue Guild, it's just literally I've got a guild called Knights of the Phoenix. It's basically just friends and family, homies that want to play. There's no expectations. You just jump in. We play together. You know, we jump in dungeons randomly whenever we got time. It's super casual. ESO is a great game for casuals. You don't have to like grind away, you know, but it gives it gives people something to do in the meantime. Um, if if that's a game that you enjoy, I'm just letting people know that, that there it is. You can join if you want. Hit me up. It's it's all good either way. There's plenty of people playing New World coming up. Um, there's plenty people playing a lot of other games. They, you know, they enjoy playing in the meantime as well, but that's there. And I just want to welcome anybody in the ashes community. If they, if they would like to just hit me up, man, you're more than welcome. 
Uh, I enjoy playing with people in the Ashes community whenever possible. I got to do that in alpha a lot with people that have been hanging around for ages around the podcast. And like, I'm, you know, Magisto I'm thinking of, I'm thinking of K man. There were, there were tons of people, man, that, that either were that hang out here on this podcast or just have been around in the ashes community for like years. And it was a lot of fun to do that in ashes, but it's a lot of fun to do that in general. So, um, also I've been finishing the rebranding. So if you go to where this podcast is posted on YouTube, it is no longer Simorg anymore. It is actually Ashes HQ is the name of the channel now. And the reason for this is because I have three YouTubes that have content on them. One is specifically Ashes of Creation, which is that YouTube so many people here have followed where this podcast is at. Um, I've got an Elder Scrolls channel, ESO HQ, which is a website developed for that game. And then I've got the Simorg HQ channel. That's the one that they all fall under. So it's still Simorg. Everything is still under some org. It's just that there are now kind of like different branches of this bigger tree that, that everything's kind of a part of. So if you if you're over there and you notice the name isn't say my name, just be aware like it's to tie everything in to the Ashes HQ website where this podcast is the home of. It's on that YouTube channel, and I wanted to make sure that it was all you know it all tied into where everything is being posted and saved, and it just keeps things neater. So don't be alarmed. I'm not doing, not doing con. It's not like I'm stopping or anything. It's just things are reorganized and that rework of the brand has actually gone down this past week. So it's done. Just be aware that the name changes are there, but it's still the same stuff, same place. It's not going anywhere. Um, so I just wanted to make that very, very clear. Um, yes. So how do we maintain momentum as a community when a game is in development and it's, you know, quieter, it's going slower. And right now, to be fair, Things in the Ashes community, things with the development of the game, the communication around it, it is slower. We've talked about it for a while. We've talked about maintaining momentum. This is a discussion component along with the other one. <clears throat> there are many of them we revisit from time to time. Like managing your expectations, having realistic expectations. It's an important discussion point as well. We, we revisit these things. But community momentum moving forward. I remember Daedalus. We had an episode, I think. We we talked about this in one of my earliest episodes, even before you were on the show. It's like, you know, community and momentum, forward momentum. And we've revisited this one over time. And it's a good time to revisit it when it is quieter. Because we do have people that join in for this podcast. And I'm glad that so many people join in with us week after week as we stay the course here. They do the same. And it's good to be a, a singular element, not the element, a very singular one of many elements in the greater ashes community that, that does work towards keeping the momentum there. Right. But it's not plentiful. We're going to be real honest. It's not plentiful content dips when it gets quieter podcasts get quieter, right? Communities and live streams get quieter. It's the nature of the, the beast. So community momentum and forward momentum is very important, you know, and there are, I think, layers to this. There are the layers that us as, you know, I, I do feel a sense of obligation as as a person on this podcast that, that produces this podcast to keep it moving forward because I made that commitment to the Ashes of Creation community. We we did what, two years ago almost now, right? I said, we're going to do that. We're going to stay the course. We're going to do it every week. Come hell or high water, unless there's something that absolutely gets in the way. And since that time, we've only had one episode in alpha due to other reasons that caused that to not be possible in almost two years. And it's not a bragging thing. It's I'm proud because I've been able to do it. I, I stayed true to my word. The community has been here every step of the way. And I'd like to think in some small way it's helped. What are some other ways that, as a community, not just as a creator, but as a community member that we all think that we could work towards maintaining that momentum for the Ashes fam. What do y'all think? Um, I, like personally, I think it's, it's just doing what we're doing is giving the community a forum to be able to share ideas. Um, I think that's kind of a primary importance because it is an open development process that doesn't mean that we're constantly bombarded with information. There are going to be periods of time when the dev team is focusing and they're 
taking the feedback they've gotten and putting that into practice or fixing, you know, things that they need to fix in order to mm-hmm. build a strong foundation. So for me, it's just kind of having, providing an outlet for the community to have discussions. And I think it's also like participating when there are discussions or um, requests that the developers have or contests that the developers have. Really try to rally the community, um, show your cre- creativity, um, and and ultimately just be balanced. Like if there is you know something that you know we we don't like, let's let's you know constructively you know provide that feedback and and be an um, oh be a, an avenue for people to provide constructive feedback. So that would be I guess the way I would continue with the momentum because there's always going to be periods of time in any development when things are slowing down Mm -hmm. because the team is focusing. So um, I I think that's just natural in a development process. So I think just kind of staying the course is, in my opinion, the best way to continue to move the community forward and maintain momentum. Yeah, I I think you guys have touched base on pretty much all angles of it there. It's it's creating that opportunity for people to be involved either in the process from intrepid side. They do that through the forums, through their dev diaries. I apologize for the screaming child. Uh, I hear that. I was not happy. (laughs) And she does that when she doesn't get her way. This is what wakes me up in the morning most of the time because she's up super early and getting into things. Anyways, (laughs) um, you know, we've got the dev diary about t- character creation right now. We've got guild discussions. We've got the live stream QA coming up here at the end of the month. Like, these are all the things that the studio is doing to keep people involved and in the loop, plus their regular other Twitter and Discord mm-hmm. social media postings. From a community standpoint, yeah, we've got, you know, shows like the podcast here. We've got other content creators doing other shows on a, on a consistent basis right now, either here or on YouTube as well. So getting involved in those projects is really big. The other thing, and and you mentioned this at the top of the show, talking to Daedalus about joining Virtue, is having that sense of community that's more internal, where you guys are just a group that game together doing other things. And I know the guild I'm a part of, Axiom, does that as well, even though I have been largely absent from any activities in the past month or so uh, due to real life. But yeah. that is something that, you know, like you guys are talking about, you play Valheim together, you play New World together and ESO together, and, and you keep that momentum going. Even if it's not momentum directly towards Ashes, it's still indirectly because you're a community of people that have got come together and game together and are mm-hmm. friends, and you're eventually going to translate that over to Ashes. And, you know, it, it, it's, a, it's an Ouroboros, it's a self-feeding circle there and that is what we that that that's to me the big thing on what we can do is just be involved with ourselves yeah i agree with that i think that's a super important point too and you know can't always we can't always like the same games you know in the meantime there might be a lot of people that are ready to play ashes but there's other games they don't enjoy there's a lot of members in virtue that don't enjoy eso that's fine right it's so it's it's good to have different outlets and you know the fact that we've got a chapter that's being formed around another game is is beautiful because even though i may not be that interested in it and other people may not be interested in it if there's still people that are interested in it as a community we're we're a community-based skilled anyway so we're not just focused on one game we we focus as on building uh you know a community that's there to play you know to, to be part like to have those meaningful relationships to, to be in it for the long haul you know not just in one game or another but you know as a community doing things and hanging together for the long haul and you know as a result of that you know having multiple chapters is a it's a very important component i think to have different games that you can play and um it's been it's been really good to kind of see that come together and and know that because you know a lot of times with guilds like when they are focused on one game this is also i think an important point when they're focused on one game only especially in a game early in development we've seen this with multiple guilds around ashes for years They'll be focused on ashes only. And as a result, people that are really excited, like some of them just fall off the radar. They're gone. You never see them again. They they don't have the patience to wait. Sometimes they'll wait and then, you know, they they aren't aren't really as active. They're waiting for the game to because there's like a lot of different people. Some people will be fully engaged in the development process. They'll be dug in as deep as it gets. 
they'll play it as long as as much as they can for as long as they can and they'll be there for every time that server opens other people don't want that experience some people want to wait till the day it launches and actually go into it completely new like completely new not know what's going on go into it blind learn about the game with their friends do things like that and and other people will be super excited and this is a this is a cultural component to guilds and mmorpgs or other games in general they'll be super stoked and excited they'll jump in they'll be a diehard and then poof they disappear they burn out right like a flame burning out real quick and they're just gone and so when you have other things that you can do together it doesn't stop that from happening or change the fact that those you know dynamics exist but it allows an opportunity for people to continue to be invested and involved with one another as a community we've got people playing arc together we got people playing the Elder Scrolls together. We got people playing, um, you know, uh, New World when it comes out together. So maybe some people don't want to play one game, but they want to play another. And there's people that are doing that. And some of that crosses over. And that's great because that continues to kind of maintain some momentum for a community itself that may also be a part of Ashes of Creation in the future. And when a game's in development, it's a tricky, sometimes tumultuous time. Um, for communities that are waiting to play it um, cuz some don't make it some guilds won't make it they they'll they'll die off they'll reform they'll do do it under a different banner we've seen that happen a lot too it's the nature of of the beast so to speak and you know it's been good within our community to see that people are you know still checking in checking in with ashes um enjoying themselves playing different games um and, and kind of like staying together playing together um now in regard <laughs> there are there's a dev discussion to talk about today and there is a discussion uh from twitter and then we have the dev discussion now the twitter one is actually this one i found interesting and i'm going to share the link this came from ashes of creation this week and i really wanted to talk about this one this one looks fun man okay go check it out i don't have the image to share i'm really sorry there's um well a gallows that they shared and the, here's the statement from from them okay and there was a follow up question or a statement and then they responded this is what I want to talk about number one those gallows look freaking sick really really cool okay they're way too clean really <laughs> they are way clean look man it's just the render man we need to get that in game that'll change real quick right uh, hopefully but. How good to have like an NPC just like afterwards kind of come walking up there and start mopping it up or whatever. It'd be beautiful. All right. <laughs> little little grunt. But it says, stay wary of committing any crimes as your mayor might send you to the gallows. If you were the mayor of a node, what crimes do you think would be worthy of such a punishment? Okay, hold on. Let's let's just take a moment. This isn't really something we've talked about before, right? Let's go ahead and go down just a bit here. I know capital punishment in a video game. This is jaywalking. What? Jaywalking. <laughs> <laughs> so the question was, can a mayor actually do that in game? And Ashes of Creation states, government officials will have wide ranging leadership power, such as marking foreign citizens as enemies of the state. We'll have more information on these systems as we continue to build them out further. Hold on a second. Are we, this is like, this was a bit of a drop of a, a pretty big piece of information. Unless correct me if I'm wrong. Did we know this existed before? Cause I got a lot of pages that were curated on Ashes HQ. This, I never got the memo on this one. I looked. Anybody? No. I didn't think so. What? So I I do remember what, what what's that bird race called again that we got uh, um oh my screenshots of a while ago? It, it always eludes me and it drives me nuts. Yeah. But oh, yeah. The, this the render of their village yeah. did have a gallows in it. And I remember pointing that out mm -hmm. at the time. And it wasn't something that anybody was talking about yet. I think 
I, I'm excited to see this. I'm, my biggest thing is how is it going to be incorporated? Like yeah. if so, if they want to hang a character, does that character actually die? Do they suffer death penalty as a result? Does the mayor go corrupted? How's that work? That's a lot. There's a lot of questions, right? Like how this is a bit, Steven, if you listen to this, this is a whole step further than what was going on in arc age, homie. Like, uh, I mean, does their head get lobbed off? I mean, are we, I mean, does this, how, how do we get to see them like sitting there and then, and then how's that play out? Like, I'm just, I'm just really curious. Like <laughs> if you keep this a team game, if, <laughs> if you're going to have heads lobbing off, I have a lot of questions about this, but that's actually, that's pretty cool, man. The government officials will have wide ranging. This isn't stated. This is for a node specific type either. This isn't military. This just says government officials. This is a it wouldn't be military. It'd be religious. Come on. <laughs> could be both. <laughs> it could be both. It could be all. I mean, but damn, man, how does that work? I'm just, I'm curious. I have questions about this. I kind of feel like this is something that would be linked to a bounty system. Bounty hunting I mean, system. Yeah. What it would make sense to me is that this is for corrupted players. Um, to, to your point about, you know, does the mayor get corrupted? I, I think there's, there's gotta be some level of guardrails around mm. this. And I don't mean that like in a bad way, because clearly, you know, if people have an opportunity to do it, right, they're going to. And so you want to, um, you know, provide some avenue for like a cool system like this, but not make it like open ended. Like, you know, if you got, become a mayor, you want the world to burn and everybody gets targeted that isn't a citizen and to be enemy of the state. But, um, I do feel like, you know, this would be something where you could, you know, get a corrupted player that's really harassing people. Um, or honestly, I would be okay if you were like one of those guys that loves to go and kill quest NPCs. I mean, that drove me nuts. Like when I was playing like games like WoW and you just have, um, you know, players come in and like kill the quest, like the quest NPC, not quest mobs. I mean, that's different, right? But quest NPCs were like a huge, like no, no, in my opinion, if you're going to come into a town face the music against a player don't attack those innocent npcs um so those would be i guess the two situations that i would feel that would be justified other than the jaywalking example which was, <laughs> <laughs> it was totally a joke but <laughs> but still I, I i think um those would be the kind of the what i would expect would be part of this system and it would link into people potentially posting a request for a bounty on someone in that perhaps getting elevated to the status of enemy of the state. Yeah. You know, you know what actually really caught my attention about this too? And I don't know if, if he's here, but meat hooks, I'm talking about you. Um, he, 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 he responded to this and stated, and this is, this is the part that I'm trying to, I just want to, I guess I guess as a community would really like to know what you all think this implies. Right. So we'll start with the statement here. He stated, a crime most foul, taking that which has not been deemed do yours by way of roles or counsel. Nadalus, why is your head down? Hold on. You're giggling way too much. Okay, I speak of ninja looting, and I'll be watching you some more HQ. I remember reading that. <laughs> so I just put eyes because, you know, like, what else do you say there? I mean, someone's saying they're watching me. And then... The, the the next day, Ash the Creation responds with eyes too, and I'm like, wait, what? What is that supposed to mean? I didn't even want to ask. What? <laughs> Hello? What does that mean? It means I got I, I got my eyes on you. That's oh, what it means. No, dude. What, dude? What do you? I don't. Even, it doesn't mean that I do that. Okay. It it's going to be hard to ninja when the world's watching. Oh my God, dude. As the sandal drops. <sighs> so yeah, that happened. And I was just like, why do you, why what, can we just. That, that'll that be it. Sim gets caught ninja looting. He gets strung up on the gallows God. in the center of town. 
but the platform won't get kicked out. It'll uh, just be a giant sand will fall out of the sky and crush the entire structure. The entire structure? Can you imagine if that was a, a singular event? Oh, man, dude. That would be fantastic. <laughs> I can see it right now because I do have this whole, like, backer level thing to where I get a statue in the world or whatever. You know, I can imagine walking by that and the devs thinking it was hilarious to just, like, have this, like, scratched in thing like someone carved it in ninja looter or looter or something <laughs> on the base down there somewhere like sort of like graffiti like in-game graffiti like it was that wouldn't be cool man because that's not part of the backer like there that's not stipulated that you can taint my like statue in game or whatever no they, they, it won't even do that you'll sit there and you'll spend their time to create the statue or however the process is set to work but in the end it's already built it's a sandal yeah, and on the bottom on, on on the sole is where it says ninja looter or something something of the sort it'll probably be more of a sassy message from steven on there i would expect but yeah yeah that was cool i, I might be I saying these things just to give them ideas but you know yeah i think so too you know i think that i believe that that's probably what you're doing and um you know i have to contemplate that later i guess anyway so interesting discussion points uh, here about gallows. Yeah, that's really awesome. Really appreciate the you know tie in to me. That was fan fantastic. Appreciate that a lot. There, meat hooks. Thanks a lot. But you know, and I don't really know what to say. Okay, moving on. Uh, there, that was a very interesting Twitter post. I, I would be curious what people think too, though. I think this is actually a really interesting um, sort of feature to add uh, into mayorship essentially and i could totally see this being a bounty hunter tie-in i would actually it would be interesting right like what if that's like a bounty hunter tie-in that could then branch into other nodes as well but only that specific thing right and then would the bounty hunters then be going in like you know because if there if it is a bounty hunter feature as part of that system then where do you draw the line on what you allow to branch beyond the military node if it's supposed to be specific to like that? You know? Just a thought. Like, you know, and then how does that like exchange sort of happen? If they put a, you know, a bounty on somebody essentially who's an enemy of the state, is that like something that they pay to another node potentially? And then that's like hosted there in the tavern. And it's like for a person in this area and maybe the rewards are different because you've got to go further out, go away from your node that I could see that working. Cause then you still keep it as part of the military system. It ties into that interactivity between nodes. It goes beyond just like maybe shuffling a caravan across the world. So, you know, it's, it's a very interesting added layer that could exist within ashes that we haven't really talked about before. So I think I want to kind of throw this at the community. If you're listening to this, watch this on YouTube later, Definitely want to know your thoughts. Would really like to hear like some of your own thoughts and feedback around this. Like what would make that interesting? What would you not want to see as part of that um, interaction for mayors? And I already saw like people commenting on the Twitter too, talking about like, do well, then do mayors become corrupt if they do that? Like and some of that sort of stuff too. So very, very interesting. Very curious about how that would play out and, and tie into the game and its systems overall. Um, there was a Reddit question that I just wanted to throw out there real quick that I saw somebody post. Will there be giant in Ashes of Creation? Will there be behemoths for sure? We know that that'll exist. There'll be gargantuan beasts that can be summoned for sure. There will be large bosses in the world. Giants though? I mean, I guess we haven't really seen anything lore wise or cosmetic wise that would lead us to believe that they'll exist. But I guess, you know, flavor question. Should they exist in Ashes? Would you like to see them there? Why or why not? Found that one interesting. I, I would say, hell yeah, they should. And they need to be as gargantuan as possible. I want giants and creatures in the world to have the scale. I mean, they've already started the ball rolling with what they've got now. But the bigger the scale, the better. I think would be it would be fantastic to be able to see that. And it it can be like in a special area. It could be in an expansion, right? It doesn't have to be like you know day one and launch. But that's just one of those things. It's just just like you walk into a kind of a huge metropolis for mm -hmm. the first time and are in awe. I want those kind of experiences in Ashes of Creation where you go somewhere or you encounter something and it, you know, it definitely 
impacts you as a player in terms of your immersion, in terms of your enjoyment, because there's nothing more fun in a game than that adrenaline rush of being chased by something that's like 10 plus times side, your side. Um, and that's, that's rare that you can get um, impressed by games, like especially MMOs lately. I haven't really had that experience um, in a long time. So, uh, but I have with Ashes, even in the alpha state. So I would like this to be yet another thing that they can, you know, check the box on and do. Because I think if it makes sense for the lore, I would love to see really giant type of mobs and giants in general. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, yeah. like I, I think they can make it make sense in the lore because in, basically this is an uninhabited planet as far as we're concerned coming back to it now so well not uninhabited but like uninhabited by the Varen, the original Varen races so to speak so to come back to it now and find giants holed up somewhere or even corrupt giants that I think that could easily be tied into things and just a piece that we haven't learned about yet um, and super cool my only yeah. caveat to this would be I want to be able to zoom my camera out enough if I'm fighting the thing at its at its ankles to be able to see the whole thing. I want to be able to appreciate yeah. that scale and not yeah. just be looking at the kneecaps and losing my character in the animation. Because I remember like fighting Gruel in, in back in TBC, and it's like well, I, can, I can't see anything because I, yes. I can't appreciate what this beast actually looks yeah. like, what he's actually doing. And in a game where there's not going to be a whole bunch of tells and add-ons like deep, yes. deadly boss mods or anything, you want to be able to see those full uh, body animations mm -hmm. to le that that are kind of um, oh what what the heck's the word man? Why are words so hard for me today? Uh, that that are kind of previewing or telling um, what the, what the next uh, attack is going to be, so that you can react accordingly. Right? Telegraph, telegraph oh, the next okay. ability. Yes. Um, so I want to, yeah, that's the only thing. It's just give me the freedom to move my camera out to scale. But we already have the giant dragons, the elder dragons yes. in there. And as you mentioned, the behemoths that, yep. that, that came with the corruption from the harbingers as well. They, <laughs> no doubt, they are mentioned in the lore because we are going to cross paths with them at some point. So give me the ability to to see them. And man, I'm, I'm happy. Ooh, ooh. Oh, that... that psychophobic hit on something that that's so good dude how about shadow of the colossus type bosses those are huge bosses man if you've played that game you know what i'm talking about you've also got that in like what i think even in like god of war there were like there were like fights that were that crazy now to be fair slinging around and and get, doing that on like you know it I get it like to that level of getting up there and interacting. I would never expect that. Right. I, I wouldn't expect them to be players to be parkouring up. That's not something I would expect, but something that size, like, you know, when I think when I, when we were talking about that, I thought of like the scaling out to where you can get enough perspective to see everything. That's something I can appreciate. Like I, I, I generally don't scale so far out that my character's a, an ant on a screen, but there are games where you can scale out pretty far. I think there was an, uh, wasn't in World of Warcraft there an add on that lets you scale further out than I think the default, right? And you could scale out pretty damn far, and it was really good for situations like that. Was it, was your character really small on the screen? Yes, but I can really appreciate being able to. To me, that does tie into immersion. Okay, we've we've talked about immersion lately. I've talked about it on the LFM podcast recently, which is a sister podcast. This more general to gaming. There's a 5 p.m. CDT on this channel, FY. And anyway, my point is, is like we had Renfell, Nathan Apom. Um, we had a discussion on this and uh, immersion, man. Like it's so important. And to me, if you have a boss that's huge. I really would like to be able to see that. Like in World of Warcraft, what just killed me about the Deathwing fight, aside from like, I just felt like overall that that was a horrible way to go about it, was that you're fighting this dangerous, massive dragon. And he is patched up with like iron and you know what I mean? And he's got all this corruption that like spills from him. And 
there's elements of that fight that were great, but man, they I feel like they missed such an important marker to capitalize on and being able to fully see this fight. Now in Final Fantasy 14, they do a pretty good job of allowing you to feel I still think even in that game on some of those dragon fights um, or these really massive like boss fights that you, you it's not quite as much as I'd like to, but I feel like they do deliver a good bit on that. Um, whereas there's other MMOs where you just don't get the full scale. That full scale adds to a whole level of immersion for me. If I can back out, yeah, it gives you tons of situational awareness. And yes, you're small on the screen, but being able to really <clears throat> just see this full scale of your characters, your raid group, and that behemoth that you might be fighting, uh, man, I feel like it's such a missed opportunity if you don't if you don't allow players to really have the option to experience it in that from that perspective. Um, yeah, I, I had to rant that's, on that one. That's the key component, though, right? Is giving people right. the option, yeah, to to enjoy it that way because. I can, we're not going to speak for everyone. That might not be everyone's Absolutely. perspective. Some people might think the immersion is being right up close to your almost mm -hmm. in a VR uh, first person view of what's going on. And, and that's your immersion because this is the reality. All I can see is its ankles. And that's all I want to see. And that is absolutely valid as well. Um, so giving people the option for that, I think, is really important. But I like what you said about immersion. That, that, that hits the nail on the head. I want to be able to appreciate the it, whole encounter, the environment, yeah. the room, or wherever you're fighting, and the entirety of the beast. Let me appreciate what the artists have done, what the animators have done, and all of the mechanics that tie into it on full scale. Absolutely. Yeah, I would love to see in addition to that, because, um, I mean, I think the camera options are totally important. But I think as we're talking about immersion, is there some way also that the developers can give you those anticipatory, like, mm. I don't want to say cut scenes, but at least like kind of RP dialogue, nothing too lengthy, because obviously if you're, doing the same boss over and over and over, right? You don't want to have like, you know, a 10 minute long intro, but at least something that kind of gives you a sense of that before you get into the fight, like them, like, you know, destroying something on their way to kind of come after the raid or something, right? I would love to see something like that in the future as they build out kind of more and more bosses or those emerge that you have some opportunity to get some of that flavor to kind of get you jazzed up for the fight you know something's coming um and i would love to see something like that again probably more like along the polish future stage than i would say really like necessary for initial um launch but just something to think about is as we're talking about ashes we know it's based on a pathfinder campaign we know Steven's totally into creating a story, building a world. It's just, this would be really like a great way to continue with the immersion, you know, use scale, use the environment, you know, use, um, you know, all the tools in their tool belt to really come up with a really memorable experience when you're fighting any boss. Yeah, I agree. I was thinking too about like in alpha, how we had the dragons that we could fight. They're like really big, like the big elder flame dragon, for example, like that was like a perspective where I was like, damn, I can't scroll back out anymore. I'd really love to see this thing at scale compared. I mean, that was a pretty big dragon. It, it really was. Um, and people, you know, we talked back about how like people were mentioning previously that they felt like the world, either your character didn't fit in the world. I didn't ever really feel that way, but I, I don't know. I I do like a world that's grand. I think of a high fantasy world. I think of grand features, massive mountains, massive trees sometimes, you know, massive waterfalls and things of that nature. And I I guess I kind of do want my character to feel a bit small in the world and and to you know to to, to be daunting in that regard. But that's also why I think it's very important to be able to scale out, because then if I can scale out on my camera that I can really appreciate just how big the world is. And I think about things like uh, features, 
uh, these big statues in the world, um, these these landmarks or, um, you know, the a massive castle siege and, and being able to really like take that in and fully feel immersed in the environment, even if I'm just running around picking herbs or something like that's to me, really, it's a really good vibe to to be immersed in in a way to where the world feels big and grand and I'm small in it. And that similar sort of philosophy for me, I think applies to the narrative too, of why I don't want to be this. I want to be the chosen one hero. Does that work great in some stories? Sure. Right. It's good. It's a good hero story. Everybody loves a good hero story, but in an MMORPG, I don't want to be the chosen one, the hero, because to me, it automatically doesn't make sense because everybody next to me is that too. And that doesn't really work. You know, we could be one of, of a lot of potential people that are like, you know, champions of a cause. But that's also not that we're the, the chosen one. We're not the one, the champion, the best, the only, the savior. Um, you know, and so I want to feel small. I don't, I don't want to feel like one piece of a much greater whole. And I think that's in terms of narrative and also immersion in the world visually yeah i i've talked about that a lot before too i agree with that a hundred percent that for me that is one of the most immersion breaking things when i started up guild wars 2 for the first time i almost didn't even want to play past the first bit yeah because exactly that reason like i log in and my first quest is to go for example because i don't remember exactly what mm -hmm. it was go kill a bunch of level one bears that are that are terrorizing this town this quest given to me by the level 30 guard my level to my level one self because they can't handle it that like that that's just complete that that uh, to me immediate is just like what kind of just wh why are you a guard you know go pick up a feather and, and sweep some floors or something because your sword does you not no good like it, it, it's totally immersion breaking i don't feel like a special character especially when there's 10 other people around you or 30 yeah. other people around you yeah. or on launch day in yeah. ashes when there's 100 other people around you all doing the same thing all being told the same thing make me feel small from a lore perspective from a story perspective then it will feel fitting to be small visually in the world otherwise give me the godlike powers right off the bat if, if that's what i truly am I mean, like, had I started Guild Wars 2 and they gave me some super special, powerful abilities right off the bat, it's a, it's a little more believable other than just going out with a couple of basic attacks. <laughs> like... And it's so true. Um, I actually got something I want to share, too, because uh, I got a buddy of mine, and uh, this is a sidestep here, but if y'all enjoyed D and D something to fill your time, I got a buddy of mine, the Nathan Napalm. He put in like a ton of hours creating this D and D play your own, like choose your own adventure sort of campaign. And I'm sharing it in chat now. And that's his tweet or whatever. And it's a good way. I, I think we as a community jumped in and played that together. Uh, and I want to share it with as many people as possible. He put a lot into it. A lot of his time, a lot of his energy, and it's just, it was a really, it was really well done. He uses puppets. We spent like two hours, right, playing through, got squashed one time through, made some bad choices, played a second time through, made it all the way to the end. It was like two hours, and there's more replayability to it. And that's, if you enjoy D&D, &D, you know, tabletop, stuff like that, this is definitely something to check out. You know, it's, it's not like child-friendly necessarily, but it's definitely not like MA either. It's like you know, parent discretion on stuff. There's like fake blood and stuff like that, but it's a really good time and it's, it's really well done. Um, definitely nothing like it on, on YouTube. So I wanted to share it. He did a lot of really good things with it. Um, and it's pretty immersive and it was, it was really fun. We enjoyed it. And I just want to share it with as many people as possible. Cause there's definitely people out there that are going to enjoy it too. And, uh, he's a homie and he's a good dude. And, puts a lot into into this and and what he does and what he gives to the community and i wanted to share that here with the ashes fam as well because there's a ton of people i mean what's this game start from a freaking tabletop pathfinder or sorry pathfinder pathfinder words are hard pathfinder campaign that you know it's like two for two <laughs> uh yeah so go check it out if you enjoy it. it it might buy it might vibe for a lot of you and and i would definitely like to know what people think a lot of people here are enjoying it we've enjoyed it um, so check it out. Final topic for today's podcast, gentlemen, 
You'll find this one on the forums, my friends. This is dev discussion number 34 on character creation. Talking about character creation. Let's go on ahead and pose the question. And the question from the development team, you can check it out on the forums. You can contribute to the conversation. How much time do you typically spend on character creation? And what are the tools you like to have available when you're building your character? Do you focus on race, class, synergy, looking good, or something else entirely? I mean, hell of a segue from, from immersion to talk about character creation. The hell yeah, of a I'm conversation. Honest. Yeah, I mean, I spend so much time in character creation. One of the first things that I do in any MMO is I go and create like a, you know, a junk character that just mm -hmm. has my name, just so I can have the name. And then I go back and kind of figure out what I want the character to look like. Um, and I like going through all the options. So as far as what I would like to be able to see and what's worked well in, in other MMOs is first and foremost, an ability to save a template. If I've spent a long time creating what I want a character to look like, I want to be able to save it and potentially share it with others um, to kind of have, you know, have them take a look at what I've done with my character. Um, I would love to be able to validate and or reserve a name during character creation as well. Uh, so that that way I can spend as much time and not feel rushed in it. Um, otherwise, at least I want an avenue to be able to do that. Um, as far as like options, um, honestly, I would just love to be able to have a lot of different types of like hairstyles, beard styles, you know, I want to be able to, um, look at like you know character body type i think that would be great you know ways we can do it um really cool and interesting colors like in terms of like eyes not anything that's going to be game breaking i don't want to you know see characters around there with like purple lipstick and pink hair i mean no <laughs> offense to people that like purple lipstick and pink hair but it's not a high fantasy like type how about of red beards red beards might work if they were like Phoenix shade, oh, come uh, shaded. On. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, um, man, dude. <laughs> but I would just, I would like to be able to have a lot of different options in terms of like hair color, hairstyle, so that you can kind of get that. And especially with you have fantasy characters, I would love to see some like really interesting options uh, for those non humanoid or those non human characters. Uh, um, Cause that's something I don't necessarily um, like dive into normally, but having some interesting choices would really kind of help me, you know, decide on some more fantasy looking characters. Like, like I said, I'm pretty vanilla when it comes to MMOs. Most of the time, my first character is generally going to be human, but having a lot of other options to be able to, you know, make a non-human unique would be great for me. <laughs> yeah so let's let's this moment here okay like you all understand that 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 is not a good look for me the phoenix i mean i did a damn good job with it i'm happy i'm proud of myself for that because i didn't know if i honestly went into it thinking i was going to be like i'm going to botch i'm going to totally it's going to be i'm going to f up so bad dude turned out really great i can't pull that off but maybe get dusted ken in a game somewhere if there was an option for that for Get Dusted in the Elder Scrolls Online, I'd do it out of respect for the Just trolling stain here. from the blood of your enemies. Yeah, that's I like that. Yes, I like that. Walk it's, in the light, friends. Walk <laughs> oh, God, dude. The you know, flames of justice in the blood of your enemies. Come on, those, <laughs> are two, those are two solid reasons to dye your beard uh... red and orange. <laughs> the lights overrated in chat. I do look much better with a dark beard. Thank you. I appreciate that. Paladin role players. Yes. Also, um, the 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 damage to my skin is now healed. Luckily, it took about what two three weeks. It's not 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 none too bad. Right, too bad. Right, but it was still. I'm so glad that I didn't. There, there. I saved the vod. I saved it for now. It exists. I'll tell you what's worth than worse than a phoenix 
colored beard on me, which it looked good, but I'll tell you what's what what looks worse is the fully bleached version that I have pictures of that no one has seen yet. It may never see. In fact, I don't know what it would take for those to actually come to light of day, but right now it's a hell no for everybody. I took pictures to document it and it scared me on a level I can't really communicate for reasons that I won't communicate and it's meaningful, but it's also like probably a little traumatic, honestly. So I'm not going to talk about it. Oh, we, we got some good Photoshop artists here. In the we community. do. I'm, I'm sure we oh can my uh, God, not see again, something along dude. those lines. Uh, have you seen, you've seen some of the stuff that's been shared though. I haven't shared this one. I'm going to pull it up while we're talking, but I can tell you some things for me on the character creation element that, that they are important. And for me, on the character creation element, I do, as I said, do you focus on race class synergy? I do, which is why I I have talked about being an Empyrean elf, right? I like this whole Empyrean Imperial sort of thing. If you go, you know, look up some of the historical way we've used that words in our own history, you kind of understand it's like kind of talks about like this heaven sort of like celestial component and light and all that. So it's pretty cool. It, it spoke to me right initially before we really knew anything about the race too much. And before we got any, we've got some ideas of what that was going to look like, but the way my character can look, it absolutely will play a role in how I'll, if it will vibe with the, the, uh, you know, with my characters, sort of like the RP element of synergy with what my, my, my uh, role might be. For example, my archetype is a paladin. I want to, if I do go paladin, it's going to be important. And so similarly, when I get a mage or something or a rogue, I don't want uh, an elf or a human for that sort of character. I'd actually maybe want like a little goblin sort of character or, you know, something like a little, like a, maybe a Vec. Like if I can make a really short Vec, you know, eh, maybe, maybe I'd roll that way. Right. But, but for me with the paladin, I'd want him to look a certain way. And it depends on what the race can deliver in terms of customization. Um, if I, if I would do that or not. Um, and I would want my main character to actually look somewhat like me, not exactly, but sort of like a guy, ball guy with a beard. That's, that's my jam. I did it in SWOTOR. doesn't mean exactly like me, but I actually do like my main. I do like my to RP, my main character sort of looking like me in this world because that actually for me does add to the immersion it allows me to feel more connected to my character my avatar of me that's in the world kind of pretending as if i am there you know with my alts on the other hand i tend to go for i try to vary up the flavor a bit like a sort of like little rogue sort of like goblin-esque character or maybe a really stout dwarf you know shaman sort of character or like you know, sort of like a troll caster or like, you know, with a frost mage or something or a gnome frost mage, you know, punt this. You got to catch him first. You know, I mean, it. it is. uh Yeah. It's one of my characters. I did name my dwarf, one of my dwarfs in uh, the alpha testing punt this because he felt a little more like a like a gnome to me than a dwarf. I mean, mine did. He doing a little jump, a little somersaults and stuff. I'm like, all right, he's, he's agile, little little buster here. Um, but I do want to share something and it's community related. It might take me a second to find it. Um, but this actually was something that was created by Burke Hardis, who you all will see here. And I'm just going to share this real quick. Um, I don't really know. I know it's going to completely jack things up, but this is uh, when we talk about artists in the community and uh, this community of mine, I just felt like this did need to see the light of day. And this kind of goes back to the... Um, Hasn't been posted publicly. It was shared in Discord. You miss out on things like this. But you can see it here. And if you're going, oh, what is going on? I'm listening to this. This is a good reason why it's important to be um, watching the show live when you can. Because you miss out on stuff like this. For the people that are going to see this on YouTube or the people that are here live, you get to see this. And there's like this little comic, short, really short comic between a um, some person with a beard and some knight. Something about loot. Don't really get the branded. I don't really know that I really appreciate the whole branding of my, you know, my brand to exemplify this in some way. It's just not really, it's, it's a dirty, dirty. We're just going to delete this off of my, um, yeah, we're just going to delete that entirely. I yeah, remove it completely. Cool. Awesome. 
denies it all yet he we're sitting here spamming the loot ninja emote on his channel yeah, yeah totally I mean, maybe that needs to go away i don't know we'll, we'll contemplate it no. <laughs> so it's funny I, I i'm glad you brought up the the topic of the character creation because mm -hmm. i'm actually in the middle of writing out my response on the forums right now really? i have my my half written post here um Great. for me Typically, I don't spend a ton of time in character creation. I usually just want to get in and play the game. Mm -hmm. So I'm really happy to, to know that they are planning to release the character creator a little bit before the live version of the game so that people can actually take and invest hours into this. And I, I do sometimes what Daedalus said, where I'll create some characters just to, as name holders, if you will. Um, I love what uh, I think it was Cheryl in chat mentioned as an idea as well to be able to kind of recreate your character but keep the same name so instead of deleting and then having to create a new one and hope to capture the name mm. <laughs> especially if you can't save the name mm. until after you've gone through all of your customization which can take a while anyways for me i know there's been a lot of chat about sliders if you guys watched asmogold stream uh, a little while ago when i think he did him and rich did a, an interview with steven uh, a little while ago on all cast, there was a lot of requests for sliders in the game, male and female. And I hope to see them. I do to an yes. extent for me. I'm a fan of sliders for most features, where, whether it's beards, faces, muscle mass, hairstyles, whatever. Give me, give me some template options like uh, a ponytail versus long hair versus short hair. I, I guess you don't really need sliders for bald, but you could for shimmer and perhaps ah, um, yes for shimmer yes anyway, yeah, continue, yeah. So. What, what's your waxing level on a scale of one to 11 right turn it up to 11 that's right what did i shave two days ago and do i shave every two days or do i shave every single day like this is important it is an important thing like because i mean stubble might look a little different what's going on 5 a.m shadow all yeah. the way up to fully waxed you know yeah but exactly yeah, yeah right. I, I got you i got thank you thank you man i appreciate that yeah. But I, so so give us like some some preset options just to kind of pick your baseline style, but then give sliders to adjust kind of the shape, length, fit of these various features. That is where true customization comes from. Even with templates, it, it still feels like you don't you lack a certain level of customization. Uh, or preset options. I don't care if there's 100 of them, I don't want to go through 100 options and see what they all look like. I'm not going to, I'll see one that I like, I'll scroll through another five, I'll find another one I like, I'll scroll through another five, find another one I like. By the time I get through the full hundred, I don't, I, I, unless I have a way to shortlist them, there's no point. Because I'm going to see a, a 10 that I like out of a hundred and I'm not going to know which one, I'm not going to remember which ones they are. <laughs> not for every single feature on the character. That's too much. Give me a slider. And that way I can just kind of pick where I want it and go from there. Color adjustments. Yeah, I mean, it's high fantasy. Perhaps we could have, you know, purple lips, red beards, whatever. Um, that's that. That's fine. For me, that that's it from the, the building side. For tattoo, things like tattoos, scars, piercings, I want to be able to have a little bit of control over where I place them and the size of them. Perhaps even the intensity, like for a tattoo, being able to choose, is it rather faded or is it, you know, fresh and dark, um, something like that would be really cool, but be able to move it around my character a little bit, pick where I want it, be able to adjust the size appro appropriately, right? Like if it starts out on the face, on my cheek or something, but I want to put it on my back, I might want to make it a lot bigger, for example. Of course, then I'm going to be wearing armor. You're never going to see it anyway, so it's a moot point. Um, so like for stuff like that, I kind of want to have a bit of freedom where it's going to go. Now let's talk about race class synergy because this is a big one for me. I've, I, I love to PVP and most other people that kind of gravitate towards a PVP side of things are gonna look to pick a race that has racial traits that are gonna help them succeed in this mode. And I know Steven has said that racials in ashes won't necessarily be combat making or breaking which i'm really happy to hear yeah and that that might help me to have a little bit more of a race class synergy from a lore rp perspective versus just picking the race that is going to give me the best advantage now if if 
I log in to character creator for the first time and I see that the the Empyrean racials are the best fit to my play style, mm-hmm. I'm gonna be really sad. Yeah. Because <laughs> I don't want to play an Empyrean. Yep. But if I feel like my play is going to be hindered, I'm going to suck it up and just deck the thing out in cosmetics and armor. So you can't tell what it is anyway. The other the other factor of that is hitbox. Hitbox is a big, big thing for me, especially when we're talking action combat as a possibility for the game still. If my is being a dwarf, is being the shortest dwarf going to be in a combat advantage? over being say the tallest Renkai or Tolnar. If you're a big bulky thing, you're going to be really easy to hit in action mode. For tab targeted, who cares? Big, it's not so hard. The biggest advantage you have is being harder to click onto target versus in a group setting versus tabbing to target. Where if you have a 10 targets to cycle through and you really want to pick one, you don't just want to be sitting there spamming tab until you get the right one. You're probably dead by the time you get there. Mm-hmm. So that's a big one for me as well. And these things are going to, I'm going to have to wait to see where they kind of land. Being spotted from a distance, absolutely psychophobic. And being able to also kind of blend in, you know, we're talking about super large scale uh, environment and and being, a, you know, like when I can walk past a fern that's 10 feet tall versus one that, you know, normally they're about two feet tall. That, that makes a big difference too, because if the, yeah. all of your foliage and environment is tall enough and large enough that even the bigger characters can kind of hide and get lost in them, still the smaller ones are going to be almost impossible to see there. So, are the, But arenas are more, I, I can anticipate, are probably semi-likely to not have a ton of that foliage around to be a little bit more of an open, structured type arena. So we'll have to wait and see where a lot of that lands. But for me, race class synergy... Uh, from an appearance standpoint is secondary to its performance and effectiveness. Yeah, I definitely can agree with that as well. I think it's very important when we talk about the stats for the races that, I mean, they, we always talked about how the, like this stuff seeds stats, right? And I think as long as it's something similar to that, when we talk about like any kind of abilities or anything that's going to be provided, it's super important that it's, because uh, that's the, there's nothing worse for me than feeling like, this character, this race in the game has the specific thing that I really, that would be ideal either in an RP element or would be ideal in a combat element, PB or PVP or otherwise. And I, I, if I don't do this, I am automatically in like, I am at a disadvantage and that's, that's happened in games before. And that, that is a damn shame. And it's the same for like, if, 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 if I can't get the race to look at least somewhat like I would want it to look, but then some still looking like, you know what, because when you think about like, you know, it's important when you think about race and world building in like a, a game or story or whatever, there are, sh- are similar features that they all share. And that's what really makes them like the, the race they are from a fantasy perspective. So you do want those features to all exist and be consistent. But you still, I think when you talk about an MMORPG, you want there to be a level of flexibility in the character creator to allow you to add certain things so that it can look in the way you want to while still adhering to those race specific features that they all of the the you know all of the people in that race share you know so if it's like tusks yeah they all need to have tusks if it's long pointed ears they all need to have long pointed ears right but how long how big the tusks are you know is is something that to me yeah that should be there but completely removing those i don't really agree with also not allowing certain things certain things at all doesn't make sense unless that race specifically cannot have it because that is a race specific feature, like not being able to grow beards or, you know, you couldn't have like tusks grown out of your mouth on like a, a dwarf, right? Like I get that, you know, but there's certain things you definitely want to try to allow as much flexibility with as possible so that a person can feel immersed in what they choose and have that flexibility. Um, for me, I am very much set in my ways. I will, I will build a character out to look a certain way. And I'll put on certain gear, like for my main specifically, and I will almost never change it once I get that specific look I want. My main character in the Elder Scrolls Online is a perfect example of that. The Meridian skin came out and I got it, right? It went and did the dungeon, did the did the achievements you needed to unlock it. It was not easy. Got it. Now I've got glowing yellow eyes 
I became an emperor, got my emperor armor, right? Was that was what I wanted. They take it away initially, but they ended up became, becoming a cosmetic costume or whatever. I I rarely wear it on any other characters, even though it's an account thing. I, I wear it on my main character because I wanted for him to have that outfit because I loved it. Title or not doesn't matter to me, right? I wanted that outfit because it was my favorite look. And I was like, if I could have that, if I could have this like theme of being the emperor of Cyrodiil with glowing eyes like a light bringer and as a Templar, that light elements in my class, that is my vibe, man. I I never change that now. I have exactly the way I want to look. I could even put a beard on a freaking elf, right? My character doesn't look like an elf. He's an elf mainly because of the fact that I unfortunately need those passives. Like those are the ones I need for my build. I wish I wasn't there. I'd be an Imperial if it didn't matter. I genuinely would be because I love the Imperial, but you know, so it is that I'm an elf on my main, but you can adjust the way that they look enough to where he, he almost looks human. You don't notice a difference in my appearance because of the skin, uh, for, you know, taking height out of the equation. If you look at my character's faces, my Imperial and my high elf, because of the skin and everything look really close. The difference is the eyes just barely noticeable, but I had enough customization to where I could change those features enough to where I could get it close. So you're an elf that identifies as a human. Yeah, basically. Yeah, that's, that's basically it. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah, friends. Would love to know what more people in the community think about a lot of these conversation pieces. It always adds to the, the discussion to be able to go back and read these. Sometimes we pull those thoughts, those uh, those discussions, and we share them here on the show. Always a pleasure to do that. Sometimes we go to the forums or we go to... Uh, you know, to Reddit or wherever we see, you know, Twitter, find some different things that actually really seem like they'd be good conversation points. So whether or not you leave the discussion in the forums, we might find it. But if you leave it on this show on YouTube or you drop it in the Ashes Pathfinder channel in our Discord, which is discord.gg forward slash the morgue, then we'll be able to definitely make sure we address it. And if it's good, we'll definitely tie it into the show because we love taking community thoughts, feedback, uh, criticisms, constructive ones. And sharing them here because again we like to advocate for the community it's a part of what the show's about and sharing your thoughts is a big piece of that puzzle so that being said it's an epic show we had today that my friends is how you have a hell of a good time in the middle of a quiet time in development good people good times good conversations and a big part of that was all of the amazing conversation happening right here live in the channel during the podcast you just doesn't get any better than that. That's the full experience, man. So thanks for everybody who's been here. And gentlemen, why don't you let everybody know your domains, where they can find you when you are not here on this show, gentlemen? All right. You can find me on Twitter at The Ashen Herald and on YouTube, youtube.com slash C slash The Ashen Herald. And have tilt. I am on Twitter at half underscore tilt or right here on Discord at half tilt gamer. There you go. And friends, this might be the end of our show today, but in closing, got to remind everybody, whether you listen to the podcast, you watch it on YouTube, you catch us here live on Twitch, you too are an Ashes Pathfinder. Much love to all of you, friends. Much love to Intrepid Studios. And until next time, you live your best lives, walk in the light, and have a great night, everybody. We'll see you again real soon. Take care, everyone. Have a great night, guys.